Well, back to Friday night here on the Final Five. So let's talk about some of the big stories of the week with my guest tonight. We have DC community advocate, former ANC Commissioner Troy Presswood, and senior advisor to the National Federation of College Republicans, Christopher Johnson, both up late with me tonight on the show. Guys, good to see you both. Thanks, great to be here. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm glad to have you yeah, back. Yeah. I want to start with what we've saw play out this week uh, around the country, but here in DC at GW, we had the protests going on. I believe we're in day nine of these pro Palestinian protests. What we're seeing in DC is a far different cry than what we're seeing across the country. Country right now, but regardless, I want to start with you, Chris. Um, as things go, uh, how do you think it's being handled, and what should be done? I think it's obviously being handled poorly. These administrators are, you know, the, the inmates are running the asylum. They are being told what to do by the students that they are in charge of. When you do what Ben Sass did, former Senator Ben Sass, mm -hmm. uh, at the University of Florida, and you set clear rules, you say that here's the expectations of how you will proceed in these protests. If you break the rules, there will be consequences. You'll be suspended. You'll be expelled. And guess what? You don't see this kind of stuff at, at UF. You're seeing it at GW. You're seeing it at Columbia. You're seeing it get worse and worse because there's a permission structure that's been built because administrators, whether they're sympathetic to the cause or they're just unwilling to enforce the rules, they're creating a permission structure for kids to do things in a way that's not productive, mm -hmm. that's dangerous and often damaging to the campus itself. Yeah. I see it differently. Yeah. I, I actually think that there has been immense restraint showed here, shown here in D.C. And that's, that's, you know, that's because the mayor and the police department have, you know, thought that maybe we don't want to be cracking people over the heads like mm -hmm. they're doing in other places. Um, I want to say this, though, about the protest in general, is that I think protest is as American as apple pie. And so campuses here like GW, all across the country, wherever, it's okay for students to protest. What's not okay, though, is that if you're threatening other students, let's say our mm -hmm. Jewish students in particular, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, I can understand why a university wants to, will want to expel that student, but or if they're damaging, you know, campus mm -hmm. property. But just for protesting, I, yeah. I have an issue with that. I really do. And, and I, I think what happened in Florida, what happened in UCLA, what happened in New York, the reason why D.C. looks different is because there's been immense restraint happening here. Yeah, and I, I wonder how much that's due to the optics. They've seen how it's gone in other places. Uh, you know, my son's daycare is down the street from the GW protests, uh, and they've been relatively, it's kind of weird when you're walking through campus, the, there's this relatively small group of folks protesting, and then everybody else is focused on graduation, mm -hmm. so you're focused yeah. in dresses and suits yeah. and whatever. I think yeah. when you look at, when you look at what was, uh, because we saw some, some signs up there that it said uh, uh, Jewish students should go back to Israel or wherever they yeah. came yeah. from, but, but the oh. thing is, it's, that is a microcosm, I think, not everybody out there is is pro Hamas as they've been That's painted. Right. You know, That's there right. are people who have genuine concerns about a humanitarian crisis. Yeah. But Jewish students have a right to to feel safe on their campus. They do, and you know, and I want to say something else about the Republicans that came off of the hill <laughs> and went over to DW to try to create this this show and you know this 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 dog and pony show basically. Uh, you know, shame on them for trying to use Washington D.C to say we're going to take away your autonomy, to, that we're going to bring you up on, you know, uh, to, to have hearings, because they want to say, they want to say that D.C., our mayor, our, our government should be doing more. You know, they have protests happening in their own states. They should talk to their mayors, their governors, about mm -hmm. what's happening there. So I, I'm really, I think what happened with, with the folks on the Hill, that's shameful, uh, that they tried to use this protest to get some type of destructive, you know, But I think it speaks to there. how unpopular a lot of these forms of protests are. You know, I, I work in the climate and energy space, and whenever we see the climate protesters blocking traffic, yeah. throwing paint, yeah, doing all that kind of stuff, it hurts the cause. That's it, not the prevailing yeah, approach to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and so, you, so even if, you know, I, I get that we need to protect free speech, and it could be seen as we a political do. stunt, yeah. but it's a good political stunt because most people respond to that stuff negatively. And I hate it when that happens with the climate stuff because it's not just Republicans who are responding negatively to that. It's any, you know, convincible vote. Uh, all right. We're not going to solve the world's uh, problems on that one, but, I'm but you, <laughs> can, you can reach some agreement right. there. Uh, I want to talk about, I want to switch gears completely here. Two stories that one thing that caught my eye, uh, Politico's out with a story that says President Biden is getting kid glove treatment from late night comics who are airing on other channels at this present moment out there. And, and I'm curious. Uh, uh, let me start with you on this one, Troy. Um, I, I, I think he gives them less material. It's different material than what they got during the Trump and Bush years, yeah. but I, you certainly don't see that. Well, you're the only Jimmy I watch. Oh, thank you. Okay, I just want to keep it real. Yeah. Um, yeah, so here, here's the thing. I think when you look at Joe Biden, what, what's, what's the thing about him? He's old. He stumbles. He, he, he's a gaff machine. Okay. Yeah. There you go. 
However, if you look at who is on the other side, you have someone who has been twice impeached. You have someone who is, you know, basically the shoe in for the Republican primary, the Republican uh, nominee. Uh, and, you know, he's in court right now. Uh, I think, honestly, like, the jokes write themselves. So that's why you see more of a focus, I think, on the absurdity of what's happening uh, with the former president than the current president. What is he? He's a gaff machine. Okay, who doesn't make gaffes? But even with who the... doesn't trip up some stairs every now and then? <laughs> I tripped up the stairs coming up here to Fox 5. <laughs> yeah, I was doing backflips up the whole way. Um, <laughs> the uh, Guys, uh, <laughs> we're out of time. I appreciated both uh, Troy and Chris. Thanks for coming in tonight. We'll save the Christy Gnome stuff for another time because oh, uh, that's ooh, not going away thank anytime. Thank God. <laughs> Justice for Great. It's it's, uh, it's rough. <laughs> the final five is back. Literally, right. <laughs> final five is back right after this. <laughs>